Hi, everybody. Uh, sorry about the background noise, I'll fix that. Welcome back uh, to Behind the Scenes at the Children's Museum and Theater of Maine. Very excited to be here today. Uh, and I've got my co host. Got Eloise here, co-hosting with me. Not super happy about being picked up, that's okay. And we're gonna be talking today about the touch tank, our Casco Bay exploration tank, uh, which is right behind me. Uh, we're gonna be looking at, um, we're, we will be looking at the animals. We're also gonna be looking at um, the care that goes into um, the animals here and into a cold water, salt water tank, uh, which is pretty interesting. So if you have ever um, considered having a cold water, fresh water, or cold water, salt water tank at home, uh, hopefully by the end of this, you won't anymore because it's so much work. <laughs> but uh, we'll be talking about some of that work. Um, I have this whole slew of tools behind me that I use uh, to take care of the animals, we've got our testing kit, this turkey baster, a salinometer, a hydrometer, uh, this mug of really stinky fish, and these two mysterious things. So we'll go through a few of them. If you have any specific questions, uh, drop them in the comments and I'm happy to answer those as we go along. Um, great. So uh, I'll start as I normally do. Uh, before I muddy up the water uh, by cleaning, I'll start with a little bit of feeding. Um, so This is called um, Pollet Booster and it basically makes the uh, sea anemones, um, it, it triggers their feeding response. So they put out their tentacles and they're more likely to take in the food that I'm going to feed them. So we're gonna start with a few drops of this in the water. I'm gonna go ahead and move you closer. There's an anemone right there. Drops of that. We got another one. <clears throat> got a big one right there. A few drops. So again, this is not food. It's just something that makes them hungry. Like if you smell your chicken dinner cooking and you're like, oh, that smells good. I really want some of that. That's sort of what's going on here. Then I'm going to, uh, next I'm going to feed the crabs. So I'm gonna bring you guys around here. Our crabs get fed uh, generally every other day with some white fish. I got the pregnant one in there. Yeah. We got a crab climbing on a crab right now. Kind of funny. Okay. <clears throat> Feed these guys. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the. Uh, filter, a bit loud. All right. This is always pretty amusing, feeding the crabs. So I've got this white fish here a sole or something, I don't actually remember. I'm gonna rip it into little bits 
and see if these guys are hungry. Um, this girl down here has some eggs. You might be able to see those orange eggs as she stands up. Yeah. She's gonna grab that fish from me. There you go. Good girl. And she is a Jonah crab. Really, they get very big, very beautiful crabs. Those really thick claws are a giveaway with the black tips at the ends. Do you want some? <laughs> yeah, they can smell it. There it is. Good job. Hey, busy bud. And uh, who else? Another one over here. Oop. Where are you going? Eating some fish. This one's being a little shy. Is she eating her fish up there? Oop. So, um, this fussy man. Uh, this is a green crab, and uh, green crabs are an invasive species that uh, came over, um, I think they originated in Italy, and my moderators can correct me if I'm wrong about that, um, but they are a delicacy in Italy. Um, here they are kind of a nuisance because they take over so much and they crowd out all um, the other crabs like our lovely Jonah crab here um, which has like a lot more meat per um, crab than these little skinny guys <clears throat> We got a little guy all the way over here. He might be hungry. Come here. It's always, always an adventure feeding crabs. Come on. <laughs> Almost as hard as feeding Brenda. <laughs> Well, so uh, one of the things that I do here while I'm taking care of the animals is I just get a count of how many we have and I make sure everyone's accounted for. So right now, uh, I think I've got one, two, three, four, five green crabs and one Jonah crab. And I think there's also a red crab in here somewhere. You want that fish? Do you want it? Oh, okay. Nope, there we go. Take the, take the fish. Okay, he doesn't want the fish. Um, so uh, if you can keep an eye out while we're feeding and taking care, and that will really help me um, when I'm taking, when I'm writing down my counts at the end of how many animals we have. Uh, so be sure to keep a record there what you see. I don't see any more crabs. So how is our lovely girl doing here? Yeah. You eating your... Look at her eat. Let's see if we can get a closer look at her eating away. It's kind of cool. Um, crabs don't have teeth like we do. Uh, they have what is called radula are sort of, uh, sort of a grinding teeth-like uh, mechanism. And they have those little <laughs> arms in the front that help them um, get the food into their mouth. Let's go down and see if we can get a closer look. I'm gonna do this as smoothly as possible so I don't give you all vertigo. get really up close and personal. She is beautiful, isn't she? Did her mouth work? <laughs> Let's 
So, uh, she's probably pretty hungry. She's eating for about a million right now. <laughs> That's not an exact number, um, but she does have probably at least a couple thousand eggs attached to her belly um, right now. So uh, she's been sitting on that for a little while. I'm not sure exactly when those are expected to uh, come out, but when they do, we're not even going to see them because baby crabs are so small, they're actually uh, considered plankton. Um, you can't, they're practically microscopic. Um, and they, they float around the ocean until they get big enough to uh, sink to the bottom and become, become adult crabs. Here's one of our, uh, I believe, green crabs here climbing up the side. Doesn't look very green right now, but um, the top is a little more green. You dropped your fish. Are you going to eat that? Well, the good news is uh, somebody else will get it because crabs are scavengers. They are uh, basically uh, get all their food from scrounging around the bottom of the ocean and picking up dead stuff. Uh, they also, especially the green crabs, um, are pretty good at cracking open mussel shells and, uh, and eating the uh, mussels uh, out from inside. They, they pry open the shells with their claws and then reach inside and pull out um, the, the meaty inside. So we do have a lot of mussels, as you can see, right behind our uh, Jonah crab here. We have a whole bunch of mussels that are all clinging together. Um, so they are uh, there, uh, partially for you guys to um, explore and uh, touch and um, see next time we're open, but also uh, as food for these guys if they ever feel like uh, cracking open a mussel. Uh, if you've ever had mussels, by the way, uh, blue mussels, they're delicious, I think. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, you might see here a little... Uh, stringy bit coming out uh, of our friend here. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that is poop. That is crab poop. So that is something you never thought you'd see today. Um, I could be wrong. If I am, uh, someone is welcome to fact check me. Um, but it looks quite a bit like what I would expect to see as poop coming out of a crab. <laughs> so, yeah. So, all right, next, uh, we are going to uh, feed our now blossoming anemones who are so excited for food. So, they're pretty hungry, so let's get on that. I'm going to move you back over here to our, uh, oh, we got some little crabs fighting for land over here. And we have this beautiful specimen of an anemone. Now, uh, when you think of the word anemone, you may picture those super colorful, uh, flowing beauties like in Finding Nemo uh, or in those tropical, uh, tropical tanks at the New England Aquarium if you've ever been there. But uh, this is a cold water tank, not a tropical tank. So the kinds of anemones that we're gonna see here are a little bit uh, different. <clears throat> First of all, lucky for me, uh, they don't sting as uh, hard, or really, we can't feel the sting at all as humans. Um, and they have those smaller tentacles. These guys are brown. Uh, but we have had anemones here before that were bright orange. Um, not, still not quite what you'd see in a tropical setting, uh, but really beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and feed this guy. And how we do that, whoops. <clears throat> Dump that in. So I've got a mug. 
with some water here. Oh, I'm gonna turn you, I know I just spent all that work doing that. I'm gonna turn you just for a sec. I've got a mug of water. I've got this stuff. Uh, which is called Rico F. It is powdered feed for corals uh, of the Ricordia family. Um, so this is basically little itty bitty powdered food that, um, see it's a very, very fine powder um, that can be used by filter feeders. Uh, now filter feeders are the kinds of animals that uh, kind of wave their arms through the water and whatever's floating in the water is what they eat. They're kind of opportunistic that way. So I'm going to put a little bit of this Rico powder into my water mug. Good. <clears throat> Give that a little shake. Do, 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 do. Wish I had some theme music to play. All right, then that's where the turkey baster comes in. I'm gonna stick my turkey baster in, pull out all that good stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Next, we'll turn our attention back to our anemone friend who's got all those beautiful tentacles out. Look at them. They may not look much like tentacles uh, to what we normally think of because um, they're quite quite fine, almost like a fur. Uh, but I assure you, they are, they are beautiful, beautiful tentacles. So now if I were to touch those tentacles with my turkey baster, um, this uh, beautiful creature would zip right back in and uh, try to protect those sensitive, uh, precious, tentacles from me. So I'm just going to come kind of close and spray a little bit of that food right on the top of my anemone there. Okay. And now hopefully that anemone will, um, take that food like a Venus flytrap and sort of eat it up. A whole lot of movement there. It's a bit hard to see, but there is a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, movement there. Pretty subtle. If only I had an underwater camera for you guys. That, uh, that would be really cool. Do a little bit more really food rich water right toward the middle because right in between all of those tentacles there that nice beautiful frill like a lion's mane right in the middle is a mouth that goes down onto the into the inside um, because even though this this thing looks like a plant this is a full-fledged animal right here um, related to jellyfish um, pretty incredible animal, but unlike a jellyfish or a jelly, as we call them, um, this guy would not float around. He attaches himself to the ground, so you can see. Wow, he's putting on a really beautiful display right now. Okay, um, the other anemones don't have their frills open, so I'm gonna let them be, and uh, we'll move on to our. Uh, next care for these guys. So there are a lot of things that I have to do um, to take care of this touch tank. And I'm gonna go ahead and take you right off the tripod now and bring you around and give you a little tour of the sorts of things that I got. <laughs> Almost ended it there. All right. So one thing is in here, you will see when I put you in here, oh, because I turned off the power, you can't see it. Oh, that's bad. But in that screen, whoops, right there, uh, there's a temperature gauge. I'll turn on the power for a second. This is the power strip. Oh, there it comes. 
look in here and ah, uh, yeah, okay. So the temperature right now is 58 degrees. It might look like 82 uh, to you guys. <clears throat> but that is, all right. So when the temperature is that high, I get in down here and open her up. These drills look familiar to anybody? intake of the uh, air. So the air goes in here and then this machine chills the air because our creatures up above, they're used to a very specific temperature. Um, and if the temperature gets too high, uh, like over 60, uh, then it can be harmful for the animals. So uh, right now this looks okay. The temperature was probably high because I shut off the uh, power for a minute. Um, but sometimes this gets a lot of dust in it, so I'd go with a vacuum and just vacuum it out. But it looks pretty good right now. So we'll see if the temperature comes down <clears throat> anymore. Okay, what next? The protein skimmer. This is a cool thing. So, our tank here, beautiful tank, oh, Uh, our beautiful tank here, um, all tanks have a certain amount of bacteria. And as we know, a little bit of bacteria is a good thing. Uh, we need bacteria, healthy bacteria in ourselves, in our gut. Um, we need healthy bacteria in gardens and in tanks, uh, in our water. Um, but sometimes if there's too much bacteria, it can be a real problem. So in that case, uh, then I would uh, I have a protein skimmer that is meant for skimming out uh, some of that unwanted bacteria. And it's really gross. Are you ready? All right. So it's under here. All the way back in the dark. I'm gonna reach in there and grab it. Okay. So this is the top of it. And what it does is bubbles come up through the bottom and they come up the top under this lid. Oh, I'm gonna put you down for a sec. Sorry. Ah, oh, I need two hands for this. Okay. The bubbles come up through here and uh, the, the cool thing is bacteria stick to bubbles. So the bubbles come up with the bacteria and then they kind of overflow into this container. And then from there, the bacteria sort of get stuck. And <clears throat> what we end up with, if I dump that out, is this lovely film, get the light in here, this film of bacteria in here that can then be cleaned out so if you, if you really want to know how gross this is, ooh, I'm going to put my finger in here. Ah, disgusting. That is all bacteria and gross dead protein uh, that was in the tank. So, ugh, nasty, nasty stuff. So yeah, all of this um, gross stuff is now in here instead of in our beautiful tank and that's how we like it great so um, you can't you don't want to really wash it out because bacteria sticks to bacteria so if I wash it out the bacteria might not stick in here so well so I keep it a little dirty I'll clean it out a little bit before I put it back um, but that's good gotta empty that uh, another thing that we do that's kind of gross as well is we uh, clean out the filter in the middle 
So that's in here, this black box, if you've ever wondered what's inside this black box in the middle. There is an intake a pipe with a cylindrical filter around it that stops all the big stuff from going down the drain. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna let it drain here for a second. Okay, it's draining all its extra water. Uh, and then I gotta wash that off in the sink. That can be pretty gross because like a lot of stuff gets caught in there. Um, so that's, that's a fun part of care. <laughs> Um, what else? Oh, checking the salinity. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna put you back on the filter, or on the tripod for this filter. There's a lot of filters, but that's a lot of fun. Um, and we can do a little bit of uh, salinity testing. So that's testing the amount of salt in the water. It's really important because um, the ocean keeps a pretty even salinity of about 35 parts per thousand. Um, now, of course, it's a big ocean, so it's not gonna stay that way all over. Um, in Casco Bay, that salinity might be a little bit lower um, because we get the rivers flowing into Casco Bay with fresh water, and so they're flowing into the bay, bringing all this fresh water and not bringing any salt, or not a lot of salt, with them. So. Um, Casco Bay might be a little bit uh, less salty. So we want to keep our salinity around there. Now, these creatures, got to give credit where credit's due, they are super, super hardy uh, animals. They live in what we call the intertidal zone. So inter means between uh, and tidal is relating to the tides. Um, so these guys live where the tides come in and out. Uh, in that area, sometimes they can get exposed to the air and the sun all day. Uh, sometimes they're covered in water um, for a long time. So they're pretty adaptable, but still we want to take the best care of them that we can. So we want to keep our salinity uh, pretty even and not fluctuating. That's when they do their best. So back on the tripod we go. like 12 tripods and a cameraman. <laughs> All right. Uh, so checking the salinity is pretty cool. This is a really neat instrument that we've got. Should bring you guys up a little further actually. Thanks for bearing with me here as I move you guys around. It is not really a job that can be done from one place. Okay. Oh, hi. Down there. Good. Hey. What you doing, Busy Bob? You hanging out? Just hanging out. Okay. So, got you up here, ready to go. We're gonna do some salinity testing. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> This is an instrument that we call a portable refractometer. That is a crazy name. Uh, portable, just because you can move it around, and refractometer because the salt in the water, when we put it here, will refract, refract the light and it'll affect the reading that we get when we look in. Um, and by doing that, it tells us exactly uh, what our salinity is our salt level is in the water. So I'm gonna take my pipette, very, very handy uh, scientific device, and I'm gonna rinse it out a couple times, make sure there's no extra salt left in there from the last reading that could throw us off. Rinsing it out, rinsing it out. And then I'm gonna take a little bit and put it on this glass lens here. Carefully, carefully. I'm gonna flip this over and boop. 
Now we've got a nice even, uh, even distribution of water under there. Next thing I have to do is look at it into the light. Looks like we've got a salinity about 35 parts per thousand. So that's, that's good. Um, gosh, I don't know if I could, I don't know if this would work. Oh, it's working a little, a little bit. Not very well. Woo. But you can see there's a, there's a thing in there to measure the salinity. Oh, you see where that blue line ends? This is really hard. Where that blue line ends, that's where the salinity level is. So I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> but uh, that's how our refractometer works. Then we just take the water, dump it off, wipe it clean with a rag, with like a microfiber rag, and then back in our lovely case. Okay. <clears throat> so at this point, uh, if anybody had any questions, I would love to answer them um, about our touch tank care um, and how we care for our, our animals back here. I'd, let me see if we've had any questions. Oh, I answered that one. Yeah. Okay. So I don't see any questions yet, but I am absolutely taking questions if you want to um, pen some in. Oh, you might have been wondering what this green tube is behind me. Um, oh, Lily Townsend asks, have any of the pregnant crabs given birth? Um, I think so. <laughs> um, I think they have. Um, the chances of us knowing that for sure is hard uh, because, like I said, when the eggs hatch, they're basically microscopic little plankton that go floating around through the tank and kind of just get dispersed uh, into the water. Um, oh, thank you, Alice, and thank you for tuning in. Um, it's informative. <laughs> um, so this tube behind me is actually kind of like a vacuum. Um, I use it to poke around in the sand in the bottom of the tank, and it pulls out uh, any of the dirt or like sediment that's settled down there. Um, so that's what I'll be doing afterwards, because it's kind of boring. So I'm not going to make you guys sit through that, <laughs> um, but that's what that's for. Okay. Well, uh, if you have another question, definitely write it in even afterwards. I'm happy to answer things uh, for you. And uh, I want you all to be sure uh, to tune in tomorrow morning. Um, <sighs> it is uh, Nature Treasure Maps with Brittany. Um, for our stay at home uh, or at home together programs uh, tomorrow 1030 be there uh, next week I'm thinking about uh, talking a little bit about the bees and the bee care that we do um, so if you're interested in that tune in again on Monday uh, at 1030 to talk about some behind the scenes bee care all right don't forget 1030 tomorrow treasure maps We'll see you there. Thanks for coming, guys. Have a good day.